Now, a thing of beauty is a joy forever. So said John Keats some 200 years ago. So how come he knew MV Augusta were going to make this, the F4S? Because beautiful it certainly is. Just look at those flowing sculpted lines. From the polyepicoidal stacked headlights encased in a slim and sylph-like fairing, to a voluptuous sculpted tank, to a tail unit neater than Madonna's rear end, to silences that emerge like cathedral organ pipes, to star-shaped wheels that are so distinctly different. But that's just an aperitivo, as the Italians would say, because this bike is art on wheels. But listen, before I tell you the rest about the bike, you just listen to the ungodly noise coming from those cathedral pipes. <laughs> And out on the road, that wonderful, soulful, but somehow legal wail stays with you because this is a soul train of a bike. It's a bike that connects with your mind as much as your backside. But who cares when you've got this much charisma? Well, not me for one. But I'll tell you what, let me just take you on a tour through this art gallery of a bike. For a start, just look at this instrument panel in here. It's absolutely beautiful, beautifully designed. If I switch on, you can see the old digital display on the left for your speedo and the old rev counter recalibrating itself. Nothing particularly new there. But what is neat is the actual styling of this. See, it's actually a curved display there. And that is replicated on both the clutch master cylinder and the front brake one. Never seen that before. These were specially designed by Nissin 4MV, so no ordinary humdrum round ones actually designed purposely for the job. Same goes for the levers here. These levers are adjustable for span, like many others, but instead of the ordinary thumb wheel on the top there, this has got a little adjustable wheel in between the lever and the actual plunger. It's just a little design touch which is a bit different. Another thing that's a design touch is this, the choke. It's absolutely tiny, it's exquisite, but it does the job and much better than the big clumsy thumb lever there. And you can reach that with a gloved hand, no problem. Just moving back a little bit from this top yoke with the old Italian flag on the top there and an F4 logo, you've got an Olin steering damper. Nothing special you might think, but this one is different. It's actually got plungers either end. They're anchored to the frame and it's the center that moves and that's actually anchored to the top yoke. See that? So you don't end in anything with any um, clumsy stuck either side. While I'm here I've got to mention these mirrors. Aesthetically pleasing, very nicely designed, but the only trouble is you don't see much of what's behind you. You've just got this tiny portion on the end here that you can see. If you're a posh spice and you've got thin arms, no trouble, but I can't see much at all. Something else with the mirrors that you can see, the indicators are actually set into the back of the mirrors, which is a really neat touch. And another good point, Light from the back of the indicator actually shines around the outside of the mirror at night, so it's a good reminder that the indicators are left on. Something you shouldn't do anyway. But you could also say about the mirrors, even though they're not very effective, who needs them anyway when you're on an F4? Everyone else is going to be looking at you, aren't they? It's a pretty bike, all right, but at 193 kilos, it's no super flyweight. It's 15 kilos up on a GSXR 750, but again, who cares? It's certainly not heavy, and it's the way it carries it that really counts. And here, it's superb. The weight distribution is spot on. It's firmly planted and confidence inspiring, but in a Ducati-like way, not like, say, an R1 or a ZX6. The suspension, too, is well sorted, and being multi-adjustable, it can cope with any combination of rider and circumstances. This on-the-road feel-good factor is down in part to the tubular trellis frame, a la Ducati, but as the whole bike was designed by 916 designer Massimo Tamburini, it's no surprise. Now the frame itself, that's bolted to these massive aluminium castings, which incidentally, you can actually split the bike in two here, take these bolts off, wheel the back away, and take the engine out if ever you needed to. And, but again, you can actually see the superb detail and this beautiful swinging arm here. Again, that word beautiful. Behind there is the Saks single monoshock shock absorber, which is also adjustable for ride height on this linkage you can just see behind there. But again, see the beautiful turning on all these frame points here. And look at this, the rear brake lever and the gear lever, they're both adjustable. Tiny little eccentric there, undo that Allen screw and just tilt that up and down to suit. It's absolutely beautiful. 
In fact, there's so much detail in this, it's pretty thirsty work, which is why I've got this water here and a chewy bar, because I'm going to have a little break, and I'll see you later.